We've got more rage games. The last one pissed me off quite a bit. So I thought, let's play another one. Today we're playing Getting Over It. Um, yeah. Today we're playing Getting Over It. And, uh, I, I'm not going to get over it. We need to think positive vibes. See? If we think positive, we get over. There's no feeling more intense than Hello? starting over. If you deleted your homework the day before it was due, as I have, or if you left your wallet at home and you have to go back after spending an hour in the commute, if you won some money at the casino and then put all your winnings on red but it came up black, if you got your best shirt dry cleaned before a wedding and then immediately dropped food on it, if you won an argument with a friend and then later discovered that they just returned to their original view. Starting over is harder than starting up. If you're not ready for that, like if you've already had a bad day, then what you're about to go through might be too much. Feel free to go away and come back. I'll be here. Th thanks. All right, Mr. Thanks Brick. for coming with me on this trip. I'll understand if you have to take a break at any point. Just for even your mistakes. Don't do that, please. You can save my progress, but don't save my mistakes. Come on. Okay. All right, made it up. Nice. This game really gets on my nerves. I don't. I bought it like. God, I don't even remember when I bought this game. I played it like I played it once and I haven't played it since. So Yeah. It's also a very old game to the gaming uh, community. Kind of. I don't remember when it came out. Oh my god. Me up. Yes, thank you. I already don't want to play this game! Slowly come down to the edge. There. Okay. Now. Up. Down. Around. Throw me up. Yes. Come on. This game is a homage to a free game that came out in 2002. Title Six. The author of that game is Jazzle, the author of a mysterious Czech designer who was known at the time as the father of B games. And B games are rough assemblages of found objects. Designers slap them together very quickly and freely, and they're often too rough and unfriendly to gain much of a following. They're built more for the joy of building them than as polished products. <laughs> My sister told me to do another rage game. So, uh, Amy, um, <laughs> fuck you. Uh, I could have just filmed another Choo Choo Charles episode, but no, <laughs> Amy wanted me to, uh, play a rage game, because, because she's... <sighs> Yes. Come on. I want the British guy to talk to me. I'm getting really, really annoyed. 
and I need in someone a certain way, to talk. Sexy yes. hiking is the perfect embodiment of a B game. It's built almost entirely out of found and recycled parts, and it's one of the most unusual and unfriendly games of its time. In it, your task is simply to drag yourself up a mountain with a hammer. And that act of climbing, in the digital world or in real life, has certain essential properties that give the game its flavor. No amount of forward progress is guaranteed. Some cliffs are too sheer or too slippery. And the player is constantly, unremittingly, in danger of falling and losing everything. Like me. Right now! <laughs> anyway, when you start sexy hiking, you're standing next to this dead tree that blocks the way to the entire rest of the game. Hmm. It might take you an hour to get over that tree, and a lot of people never got past it. You prod and you poke at it, exploring the limits of your reach and your strength, trying to find a way up and over. And there's a sense of truth in that lack of compromise. Most obstacles in video game worlds are fake. You can be completely confident in your ability to get through them once you have the correct method or the correct equipment or just by spending enough time. In that sense, every pixelated obstacle in sexy hiking is real. Thanks, um, thanks for that. Yes, 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 come on, come on, come on, please. How do I do that? I'm gonna have to throw myself. Please! Oh. I went the wrong way, I was supposed to throw myself and I didn't go down instead of up. Excuse me? What? <laughs> okay, I'm getting somewhere. The obstacles in sexy hiking are unyielding, and that makes the game uniquely frustrating. But I'm not sure Jazuo intended to make a frustrating game. The frustration is just essential to the act of climbing, and it's authentic to the process of building a game about climbing. Mm. A funny thing happened to me as I was building this mountain. I'd have an idea for a new obstacle, and I'd build it, test it, and it would usually turn out to be unreasonably hard. But I couldn't bring myself to make it easier. It already felt like my inability to get past the new obstacle was my fault as a player rather than as a builder. Imaginary mountains build themselves from our efforts to climb them. And it's our repeated attempts to reach the summit that turns those mountains into something real. I am really sweating playing this game. I shouldn't be, but I am. Do not. <sighs> this game is so annoying.
I go very slowly, I should be able to... When you're building a video game world, you're building with ideas. And that can be like working with quickset cement. You mold your ideas into a certain shape that can be played with. <laughs> and in the process of playing with them, they begin to harden and set until they're immutable, like rock. And at that point, you can't change the world. Not without breaking it into pieces and starting fresh with new ideas. Okay, I know what I need to do from here. I need to... First, I need to fucking get on the rock. Lower myself. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm not. No. I won't allow it. Okay, okay, okay. Now. You throw myself. What am I supposed to do? You've you done this part before. You know it's possible. Just do what you did the first time. Shut the fuck. The first time was like fucking two years ago. Shut up. Fuck. Fall down and get on that thing. Am I? I almost said parked. Yeah. <gasps> I did it. Yes. Oh. Now I need to be so careful. Go. For years now, yes! I've been predicting that games would oh. soon be made out of prefabricated objects, oh. bought in a store and assembled into a world. And for the most part, that hasn't happened. Because the objects in the stores are trash. I don't mean they look bad or that they're badly made, although a lot of them are. I mean they're trash in the way that food becomes trash as soon as you put it in the sink. Things are made to be consumed and you- Why the fuck are you them. putting food in the sink? And once the moment is gone, they transform into garbage. In the context of technology, those moments pass by in seconds. Calm down, calm the fuck down, and go slowly this time. I said slowly! Over time, we've poured no! refuse into this vast digital landfill that we call the internet. It now vastly outnumbers and outweighs the things that are fresh and untainted and unused. When everything around us is cultural trash, trash becomes the new medium, the lingua franca of the digital age. And you can build culture out of trash, but only trash culture. B games, B movies, B music. B movie is, sorry, but it's a shit film. Okay, now slowly lower myself. Bring this across, grab hold, and, um, uh, oh god, stop doing that. It's so confusing to do this shit.
this way, and then this way, okay. Maybe uh, this is what digital culture is. A monstrous mountain of trash, the ash heap of creativity's fountain. A landfill with everything we ever thought of in it. Grand, infinite, and unsorted. Oh, you just lost a lot of progress. That's a deep frustration, a real punch in the gut. Shut the fuck up! No! <laughs> 